Okay, so now let's start. They say uh, the diagram below shows the graph of f of x equal to x squared minus 4x minus 11. And then g of x also is given, but they don't give us the equation. And they say a and b are the x-intercepts of f and c are the x, uh, the x intercept of g. D, the turning point of f, means function f, and f and g are in intersects at m, negative 1 and t, and n, 7, at 10. Now, let me let, let me break down quick in, in a second, and then after that, we get done with the question, okay? We start to the question. So here, they mean, just a minute, sorry. Look, these are x-axis here. So any coordinate to which cut at x, we call x-intercept, means b is x-intercept, and then a is intercept, x-intercept of the graph of f. Just like I see this is F. And this line here is the straight line equation of G. And this is a parabola. And we see these two graphs, the intersect at N and the intersect at M. Just like how they give us all this information. At point M, where the intersect is negative 1 and 2, we don't have a T, we have to find letter. And then here, uh, another point of intersection is 7 and 10. So now, let's get to the question now. So let's say find the coordinate of D. Coordinate of D, we know, is the turning point of parabola. Uh, the turning point of parabola. So now, how we get the turning point of parabola? We have a little form, like especially if they have given you the equation. So the equation here is given. The equation is given of the parabola. The equation of the parabola is this one right here. So now, remember, right, uh, any number before x squared, any number before x squared is a. So what is before x squared is 1. If somebody give you, let's say, uh, x squared negative, so the number here before x squared is negative 1. So in a quadratic, this number here, we call it what? A. So for this case, our value of A equal to 1. So we're going to say our A equal to 1. And what is B? B is the number before x in any quadratic. So our B equal to negative 4, B equal to negative 4, and C, our C equal to negative 11. So now for us to get the turning point of a parabola, we say at turning point, we have an x and a y. Any coordinate on Cartesian plane has x and y. So to get the value of x at turning point, x at turning point equal to negative b over 2a. You apply the formula. Make sure you write everything. So right? You write that and you write this. So you say x at turning point equal to negative. What the value of b? B equal to negative 4. And then we know 2, 2. What the value of a? A equal to 1. So now then you can plug this in a calculator or you can say negative and negative. It's going to be positive 4 over. Now, 2 times 1 equals 2. So now, our x at turning point equal to 4 divided by 2 equal to 2. Okay. So the value of x at turning point equal to 2. So we can simply come here and replace these two. We're going to say equal to 2. x equal to 2. Now, to get the y at turning point, make sure you write this as a part of your solution. y at turning point, what you do, take this equation and sub because remember this turning point is lying on this parabola. So take this value of x at turning point, substitute in the given parabola equation. So now y at turning point means f of x meaning y equal equal in the position of x. We're going to plug this two here and then square. We have it square and then we minus we minus. 4, 4. In the position of x, plus the value of x, which equal to 2, and then you say minus 11. If you plug this in the calculator, plug in the calculator, and then this is going to give us a negative. Uh, let's plug quick in the, in the calculator. Let's plug quick in the calculator. So it's going to give you negative 15. Negative 15. Okay? So we have a negative 15. So then why are turning point equal to negative 15? So now we can simply come here and plug this value. Say x equal to 2. A turning point means point D. A value of x equal to 2 and y equal to negative 15. And sometimes you have to check if it makes sense. Look, at this point here, this is x axis and this is y. And it makes sense this is like a 2. And this value of y is on below y axis means it's negative. So it's negative 15. Yes, it makes sense. So then the value of y, a turning point we have. So then we're done with the first question. Let me maximize my razor quick and let me go quick a little bit right so I can finish this question within a few minutes, okay? So at point D, which is the turning point we have? Now we want to get the distance CN. Distance CN. So now look. Look, listen. Here. If you want to get the distance CN, so let me raise this other stuff here. This is negative 15 here. Okay, if you want to get this in CN, but the problem we don't have the value of C. But hey, look, if this is 2, look, if you have a Cartesian plane, right? 
the value of x at any of these points must be the same. If this is 4, let's say here is going to be 4x, see, and here is going to be 4x. And then you're going to say maybe y equal to negative 3. And we know here, since it's on x axis, y equal to 0. And here y equal to be 3. We just assume because this is going to be, let's say this is point zero zero here, the origin. So for now, if this is 2, then at c, the value of x equal to 2. But we know at c, the x intercept. Because this is origin. So the value of y equal to 0. So for that being said, now we can just go ahead and find the distance because if you want to get Cn, we can use a formula and we have the value of C and N. So now we're going to say distance of Cn equal to, if you want to get distance formula, you say x2 minus x1. But for now, we don't have x2, x1. We have a C and N. So I'm going to say x at C minus x at N and then we square plus, now we do the same thing for y, y at C minus y at N and then we say bracket square y at n so bracket square now we're going to say uh distance of c n so we have all this formula we have x at c what is x at c two what is x at n seven and then so you substitute all of them now we say x at c equal to two what is x at n x at n equal seven bracket square okay what is y at c y at c equal to zero minus y at n what is y at n equal to ten so you can come into your calculator Come to the calculator and plug in. The well, I come to the my calculator. Sorry, I said well. Come to the square root. Go to the square root, and they say bracket, bracket. The two, two minus seven, minus seven, minus seven, minus seven. They come to the bracket, bracket. They square, square, and then you plus again. You plus again. They come here and they say zero minus ten. Zero minus ten equal to negative ten. Zero minus ten. Zero minus ten in the bracket, bracket square. So I think this is gonna be five, three, five square. Okay, five square to five. Okay. So the answer here is 5 square root of 5. So we just come here and say, okay, so the 5 square root of 5. Our answer is 5 square root of 5. So distance of Cn is 5 square root of 5. We know, okay. So it's going to be 5. Let's use another color here. 5. Distance equal to 5. Square root of 5 unit. And why we have to write unit? Because the distance. Because any distance, you measure with the unit. Let's say kilometer, meter, uh, centimeter. But for now, they did not give to us which type of unit is there. So I'm going to simply say what? Units. Because the distance now, so they say for which values. So this one we have. Let me just see. If raise and make a space here quick. Okay, they say for which values of x. So they're looking for the value of x, whereby f of x is below g of x, because this hand is below. So now, for which value of x below. So we see at this point is where they intersect. From this point, all the way we see this is the f of x is below g of x. But after, this is g of x is above. From this point, so, but now let's go to exactly what they say. f of x is below g of x. So we know at this point here, this f of x is below this g of x. So they when the value of x is at those points. So the value of x is here is negative 1, from negative 1 all the way to seven but hey since they say is excluding also you must write excluding here but if it was including if it was and then i was going to put including but for now they did not say including so this can be a value of x so this can be the answer you just write it how it is okay now let's go for the last one so for the last one here then and trace it so for the last one Look at the last one. The last one, they say uh, g of x minus f of x maximum. They say find the value of x where g of x. So don't worry about this maximum. We're going to do it later. But for now, just find g of x minus f of x. So what is a g of x? We don't have a g of x. They just say here g of x. But we don't have an equation of g of x. So first and foremost, I'm going to say g of x is the equation of line. And equal to mx plus c. Because we don't have the equation. So... Oh, these g of x represent using y. So I can say this is y equal to mx plus c. So very first thing you have to do, find the slope. m represent the slope and c represent y intercept. Are we going to get the slope? So this is standard equation of a line. So slope always you take y2 minus y1 because they want this equation. Okay, y2 minus y1. But what is y2? y2 equal to 10. But what is y1? y1 we don't have t over x2 y2 sorry because we say uh value of slope equal to 
y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Or for now, since there's no y2, we can say yn minus ym over xn at n and then minus x at m. So we have everything faced before we go further before, but we don't have the value of y at n. So let me find the y at n before I go further here, right? How I'm going to get y at n. Look, these two equations, they intersect at m and n. And whenever the equation intersect, you can equate those equations. See, whenever the equation intersect, you can equate those equations. It's very, very acceptable. So I'm going to say, let me use this equation here, which is f of x equal to this of parabola because the intersect means they have the same point where the intersect. So now let me substitute this value of x in here to get the value of y because if I substitute x, then I'm going to get value of y at the same point. So why am I substitute in this equation? Because the intersect and when intersect, they have the common point, same point. So I'm going to say put negative one here. It's going to be negative one in this equation. The position of x, I'm going to say negative one, which is that one right there. Square, square minus four times x, x equals negative one and then minus 11. Plug in the calculator that one. When you plug in the calculator that one, and then it's going to give us a uh, negative one, okay? Plug in the calculator, and this going to be negative one square equal to one. Negative, negative is going to be positive. Uh, okay, so this and this going to give us seven. Okay, one. Uh, and that one is going to give us five. Five, it's going to be negative six. Negative six. Okay, so now we have the value of t equal to negative 6. Means when x equal to negative 1, the value of t equal to negative 6. Say t means x at, at negative 1, which is which is same as t, equal to negative 6. So we have a t equal to negative 6. We needed that point. So you have to show that in your solution. So t equal to negative 6. So our t equal to negative 6. And x equal to negative 1. At this point m, at point m, let me just keep clear equal to negative 6 here. So for that being said now, you see, you can get your slope. So I'm going to say my slope now, my slope equal. Okay. To get slope, take y at this point because we want to get slope of this line. y at n minus y at m because you take the point which lies on this line. Slope of this line minus y at this point and then over x at that point minus x at this point okay so then you say 10 plus plus can be because if you plug negative negative it's going to be plus uh this can be give us 16 and then 7 minus minus can be plus can give us 8 equal to 2 so our slope equal to 2 so then you say in this position of m i'm going to put slope equal to 2 so i'll say my y equation which i'm looking for equation of a line equal to because for me to minus this i must have a g of x and f of x but i only have a f of x that's why i'm finding this g of x just in case if you get confused you say what am i doing so in the position of m we're going to write our x equal to 2 and then x plus c so the next thing for you to get that g of x because remember now i'm, I'm searching for a g of x okay Take any of these two coordinates which lies on this g of x substitute where you at any of the two okay i might take this or i might take that either one it does not matter it's going to give us the same question now let me say uh i don't like negative i hate negative so i'm going to take this one 10 i'll put here but it's going to give you the same value 10 two times what is x x equal to negative one and then we plus c so this is going to be 10 see oh oh oh, oh i'm wrong so x equal to seven i don't know why i say negative one here so seven good two okay 7 and 10. What's the value of y? y equal to 10. I'm sorry. I took different values. I'm sorry. Equal, equal 2, 2. In the position of x, I'm going to put 10. Okay, I put 10. Means you must take that coordinate and substitute in the equation you have for you to get C. So this is going to be 10 equal to 2 times 7 equal to 14. So it's like say 10 equal to 14 plus c but you have to take number to the number so 10 minus 14 equal to c so 10 minus 14 negative 4 equal to c oh so we have a c equal to negative 4 but you have to write there in your solution so now then i can say finally my question of a line i have it what is the question of a line i just obtained now is going to become which is like a g of x equal to um 2x 
and the value of c because this is m m equal to x plus c the value of c equal to negative four okay so then we have a g of x and we have f of x so then you can subtract them because there's no way we was going to subtract it if we didn't have a g of x so now we can subtract it let's subtract now and then finalize the maximum thing so so you can get the maximum if you did not subtract okay so f of x minus g of x f of x minus g of x oh they say g of x minus f of x i'm sorry g of x okay what is f g of x g of x is 2x minus 4 minus minus fx what is fx this one they give us here x squared minus 4x minus 11. so now we're going to say this same is here okay now if you put in it's going to become 2x minus 4. i just write that we have to put it in it's going to be negative x squared negative and negative positive 4x negative and negative plus 11. you just expand it okay you open the bracket okay so now we take the like terms now negative x it doesn't have any like terms okay now 2x plus 4x plus 6x the only thing we left is number so this is gx gx minus fx this is gx minus fx so we done get gx minus fx but now they didn't just stop there they say find the maximum so to get the maximum in a math if they say find the maximum or minimum or find the greatest or find the lowest what you do you have to derivate find face derivative and then equate equal to zero whenever they say uh at the maximum point at the highest point at the lowest point or at the maximum at the minimum at the biggest at the lowest any of those terms or at the stationary all you need to do find the face derivative and then equate equal to zero so how are we going to find the face derivative look to derivate this term here, what you do, you see in the number which is here on top, now how you derivate. Multiply by anything behind. Multiply by anything behind, it's going to become negative 2 because it's going to be 2 times negative, negative 2. And then write your x the way how it is. And then come to the top, say, whichever number you have here, minus 1. 2 minus 1 equal to 1. Now we go to the next one. You do the same thing. There's no number here, means you know there's a 1. Because if you say x, means x power 1. Let's do the same step. 1 times 6, 6. Write your x, write your x. Take a number, any number which is in here, always minus 1. It does not matter which number, but you must minus 1. So, you're going to take whichever number is here, minus 1. So, the number which you have now is 1. 1 minus 1 equal to 0. And then this one does not have any x. So, if it does not have any x, means when you derivate, it's going to become 0. Because we assume it's a constant. It does not have any x. And then all this stuff here, you have to equate equal to 0. Okay? You have to equate equal to 0. That's how you find the maximum, okay? So this zero here, I don't need it because it doesn't exist. So now we're going to say now, look, negative 2, x power 1. But what is x power 1? When you say x power 1, means it just say x. When you say x, power 1 is x. When you say 3, power 1 is 3. So now this is going to be x power 1, it just say x. Okay, so what I'm going to do, but what is x power 0? x power 0 equal to 1. Any number power 0 equal to 1. Look, let me show you here. That is true anything power zero equal to one anything i can take any number here look for example da, 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 anything power zero and they say power zero look how it's going to give to me it's going to give me one so anything power zero equal to one so for that being said then i'm going to say well so it's going to become six x power zero what is x power zero equal to one so it's like saying six so this stuff here is six because it's going to be six times one which is going to be equal to six so the next thing i'll take negative 2 over it's going to become positive 2 because this is just a 0 equal to 6 and then divided by 2 and then divided by 2 this and this cancel so 6 divided by 2 equal to 3 so the value of x equal to 3 when we do all of this they say find the value of x so we say x equal to 3 but you have to make sure you show all your solution and how your answer comes about okay look you might be the first time here share this video like this video share to your friends uh if there's any button that you have subscribed also this uh uh available also on the play store on the iOS store and all the stream platform thanks a lot and i'm gonna see you very soon peace and i'm out